But how about a foreign movie? Did we see a foreign movie this week? We did. The Eye. The Eye. 2002. And I had seen the 2000 American remake. Uh, 2006. 2008. Oh, 2008. 2008. Okay. Uh, Jessica Elba starred in What the was it called? Remake. The Eye. Oh, The Eye. Okay. Yeah, uh-huh. Also The Eye. And there's also an I-2 and an I-3, which, which we've we not have seen. not seen. Yeah. Directed by Danny Pang. Written by Yut Jan Hui and Danny Pang. A Hong Kong movie. Yes. Stars Angelica Lee, Kucha Rujananan, and Lawrence Chow. One hour, 40 minutes. Mm-hmm. Wong Kar Mun is blind. And as the credits roll, first thing up, she gets an operation on her eyes. New corneas. It's a, huh? As she recovers, Ying Ying, the little girl in bed next to her, how would you like to be named Ying Ying? <laughs> Ying Ying, the little girl, visits and says she has a brain tumor and needs a lot of operations. They then remove Mun's bandages so she can and she can see blurry images. She lost her sight at the age of two. Yeah. So she's been blind a long time. And throughout the movie, her vision gradually improves. We don't get a lot of details on that. But in the beginning, it's all very blurry. Mm-hmm. She talks to Ying Ying again and says they'll go out and play after her operation tomorrow. That night, she sees a blurry black figure approach the old woman on the bed across the room, and they, the two of them walk out together, the old woman and the black figure. Mm-hmm. The figure of the old woman is strangely insubstantial. The next morning... Well, it's just really blurry. You do, you, you do kind of see from Mun's point of view. Yeah. It's it, really yeah. blurry, really distorted. Her vision is just not there yet, so... Yeah. It's understandable that, you know, she's just not seeing right yet. The next morning, they come in and wheel <clears throat> out the old woman who died in the night. Could it have been a ghost? And Mun says, but I saw her go out with somebody last night. And they're like, no, yeah. not this lady. <laughs> she's discharged from the hospital, and on the drive home, she sees a man standing in the middle of the highway. Very strange. Mm-hmm. She's definitely seeing things that other people don't seem to notice. She goes to the therapist to learn how to use her sight. And basically, they, he he just kind of dismisses the hallucinations because she's been blind since two. Her brain doesn't know how to process vision. And that's he holds part up of a stapler job. and says, what is this thing? And she can't tell him. She's not been able to yeah. see for all the, I mean, she knows what a stapler is, but by, by touch, sight, she by can't touch, recognize it. she would it. recognize what a stapler is, yeah. but she can't cognizant, uh, you know, can't make the connection yet with things. And he says, oh, that's why you're seeing things. Her eyes work, but she doesn't really understand what she's seeing. Mm -hmm. That's proved. She can do that. Yeah. She then gets fired from the all-blind orchestra. Yeah. She no longer qualifies. Yeah, she's no longer qualified to be in the blind orchestra. Congratulations. You're (laughs) fired. Yeah, we're all happy for you. Yay. Okay, get out now. (laughs) It wasn't that harsh, but the director has a talk with her. Like, well, you can't stay here. You You're can't not stay here yeah. anymore. Yeah. She starts seeing photos and furniture appear and disappear that aren't really there. Her room starts to change to a different room. The little boy across the hall keeps asking her if she's found his report card. We learn later that he committed suicide not long before because his parents didn't believe that he'd lost his report card. Those Asians take their grades seriously. Very seriously, yeah. Part of her confusion, at least at the beginning, is because she doesn't understand what she is supposed to be able to see and what's real and what isn't. Mm -hmm. She's never seen anything before, so it's hard to know what's unusual. When she's finally attacked by a scary ghost at the calligraphy teacher's and he he says he didn't see a thing, she realizes something ain't quite right. Yeah. yeah, She's seeing a lot more ghosts now, Mm -hmm. and she runs into a woman that asks, Can you see them too? Oh, yeah, that was at the restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. She sees the uh, the owner's uh, wife and kid, the ghosts, come come to the counter. And, and nothing ever goes anywhere with this other no, woman. No, it doesn't. No. She's apparently not the only yeah. one who can do it, but yeah. that doesn't really matter. But it, but it does help Mon figure out that, oh, not hallucinating. I'm seeing ghosts. Yeah. Because this other woman is, yeah, oh, I see them too. But he doesn't see them, and, you know, and nobody else does. And, yeah. A ghost of a little boy runs right through her, and then she sees a crowd gathering and sees that the little boy is laying on the ground dead. He was hit by a car only seconds before. It's like she realizes he was dead before the kid did. Mm -hmm. She sees a man in black come and collect the boy. And very blurry, distorted, but basically that's... uh, It becomes clear that the man in black is some kind of grim reaper type figure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or like the reapers from Supernatural, where there's a bunch of them. Only with better effects. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. She tells the doctor what's been going on. She screams that she, that he doesn't believe her. But he's starting to fall in love with her too. Doctor Lowe a, does little go, romance uh, falling yep. there. Yeah. Doctor Lowe does go and talk to his uncle, the other Doctor Lowe, who was the surgeon who performed the transplant. And after the conversation, maybe he does believe her a little bit. Mm-hmm. She goes home and finds her sister and grandmother burning a report card in a can in front of the apartment building. Is it that report card? It's never explained. It isn't, but it makes you wonder. I think that may be one of those Chinese cultural things that mm-hmm. would, they, a Chinese person would understand and we just didn't get. Yeah. You know, they're, they're burning the, they found the report card. They know they made a mistake. They're burning it to appease the spirit. Mm-hmm. Except we see the little boy again after this, so they yeah. didn't solve the problem. So yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure why that scene was there. And it's never. If the boy had been, you know, released, fine. Mm-hmm. But he wasn't. And some Weird. of the and some of the spirits, you know, the Grim Reaper figure comes for them, and some seem to stay. Well, it is That's explained that go. Yeah, later yeah. on they explain. Oh, that if some they don't ghosts... have any, if they don't, if they have unfinished business. Or, yeah, 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 unfinished business, like un, report un, card, un things, yeah, unresolved. Yeah. yeah. She winds up back in the hospital. There's a very strange scene where she's playing the violin very strenuously, mm-hmm. and there's this man in a yellow raincoat with this little dial of something, and that, that did not make any it sense to me really. either. It was like a numerology. Might be an I Ching thing, mm-hmm. but I don't know. Uh, so anyway, somehow or another, she overworks herself and winds up back in the hospital. Mm-hmm. And once again, she sees Ying Ying, who now says that she can oh, leave yeah, the hospital. It. Yeah, she she yeah. she was playing the violin so vigorously, too that long she or too hard, and passed out. Fainted, yeah. So Ying Ying now says she can leave whenever. The man in black is standing behind Ying Ying, who Mun quickly realizes is dead. The two figures then walk off together. The doctor comes out of the ER to tell her that Ying Ying just died, but Mun already knew that. Yeah, never mind, I know. The other doctor, he may start believing this as well, because she's very convincing. Mm -hmm. Mun starts to accept that this ability may be a good thing. She can talk to dead people, that's not bad. She finally sees a photo of herself and says, who is that? Turns out when she looks in the mirror, she's been seeing the I, the eye donor's face, the mm. cornea woman. Yeah. That's not what and she that, sees and, in the mirror. And that's kind herself. of an unexpected twist. Like, oh. <laughs> the two Dr. Lowe's start talking about the donor. The younger doctor and Mun go to Thailand to get more information about the donor girl. Mm-hmm. They track down where she came from and go to see who she was and what, what that was They about. visit a hospital where Dr. Eek, the Thai doctor, works and Mun recognizes a few things, even though she's never been there before. Mm-hmm. Dr. Eek sees the patient records <clears throat> and recognizes the information. Oh, it's her. Oh. Mun tells him that she can see things, and he understands with no argument at all. Mm-hmm. No convincing there. He knows, he knows more than he's saying. Yeah, the and donor, there's a reason for that. The donor, <laughs> Ling, used to be able to foresee death, and the locals treated her like a witch. She once predicted a terrible fire, but no one listened to her, and many died. Mm -hmm. Ling eventually hanged herself in guilt. Ling's room is the room that Mun had been seeing in her visions. She ends up spending the night in Ling's room and waits to be contacted. She then has a very detailed flashback of Ling's hard life, followed by her suicide. It turns out that Ling reenacts her own suicide every single night at 3 a.m. because her mother won't forgive her unfinished business Mm -hmm. her mother and ling through mun apologize to each other and ling finally finds peace mun and dr low head back home on the bus happy ending all done on the way or is it the bus stops in traffic mun thinks it's all over until she starts seeing a bunch of black shadows walking down the street the reapers are coming reaper convention Mm mm-hmm she, sets off the, she gets off the bus and sees a crashed fuel truck up ahead on a crowded bridge full of passenger buses. And it was some kind of gas tanker, like liquid, uh, uh, vapor gas. Vapor gas, yeah. yeah. Not, not a gasoline truck. But, and it's got a know, leak. It's like pssst, leaking all over the road with this gas. invisible gas yeah. that nobody sees. Whatever's going to happen is going to be big as there are reapers everywhere. Mun runs around telling people to run away, but no one listens. It's like she beats on the car windows and people just ah and yeah. don't even don't even listen don't even roll down the window. What's she saying? I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> nobody knows. <laughs> nobody, uh, no one sees the gas leak. See. Then it explodes and hundreds and hundreds die. 
Mun gets sprayed with some glass in her eye, going blind again. A happy ending for Mun. Sort of. Hmm. What'd you think? Mun and Mun and Doctor Low end up. You know. Yeah, they do. Um, all in all, I liked it. I liked it. Yeah, I liked I, I liked the American version too. I did not see the American yeah. version yet, yeah. but yeah. of the two, then since you saw both, which would you recommend first? Well, there's that ending. <laughs> The ending in this movie is hundreds of people die in the explosion. It what follows, happens in the American it version? It follows the story very closely with the uh, with the events that unfold, and they go down. It's uh, uh, they go down to Mexico, where the Ling character, where the donor character, uh, lived and died, and then they're on their way back up. And so we got a Mexican person kinda... instead of a Thai person. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh huh. And then they're coming back up and the same kind of thing where they're stuck in traffic and like there's an accident up ahead and she starts seeing crowds and crowds of reapers coming in. Except she finally gets through to them and starts a stampede of people running and they get away from the explosion. She takes glass in the eye again and uh, goes blind again at the end, but she saves everybody. So a happier Americans get a happy ending, yeah. Chinese get the bad and ending. I was kind of surprised. Like, what? Nobody's what? It's gonna blow up? What? <laughs> They're all gonna die? No. Yeah, that's a that's a Hong Kong movie for you. I guess Chinese people are nihilists. Yeah, it yeah. was grim. They all died. Yeah, at the end. yeah, yeah. They did. Not everybody. Yeah, and and then uh, she, it, I I believe in the American version, she gets back in the orchestra because she's blind again. I think that's how it ended, showing her playing in the orchestra again. Didn't they show that in this one? Didn't they? I think they did, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, she can be in the so it is sort of a happy ending for her. Mm, Blindy, she wasn't unhappy. And being she ends blind. up with Dr. Lowe. Yeah? Yeah. The whole plot about being able to see for the first time was handled intelligently, mm-hmm. and I would, ha- I would have mm-hmm. been entertained had this not even been a horror movie. Yeah. Angelica Lee is very good in the role as Mun. The film is well-paced and slow-moving. It never gets boring, but it does build up slowly. That's but a good thing. But it's nice. The ghosts and special effects are very good. Mm-hmm. Very yeah. creepy. Yeah. Most of the ghosts are understated and nonviolent, but they are definitely weird. Mm-hmm. There's not a lot of gore until the very end when we get some very detailed, gratuitous shots of people burning to death. You want to see some cooked people. Mm-hmm. It's a good one. Yeah. I expected that at some point one of the Grim Reapers would notice her and maybe cause some trouble. But that never happened. No, they didn't seem to care. I didn't understand no. the bit with the report card or the man in yellow with the wheel. If that was the cause of the boy becoming a ghost, why did we see him after they burnt it? No. Uh, don't get that one at all. I don't if know. you can, if you know why, let us know. Comment. No. Send me an email. Comment mm-hmm. in the bulk yeah, area below. Explain that, explain that for us. Yeah, mm-hmm. I would like to know more about what that was about. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of unanswered questions, some of which may come from Chinese culture that I didn't quite pick up on. Still, I thought it was very entertaining, and mm-hmm. I recommend it. Yes, me too. Yeah. And I want to see the I2 and 3. I2? Wouldn't that be me too? I2? Too, me too? I2? Too. Me too. Me yeah. three. Yeah. yeah, it was good. I want to see more. Yeah. So does she. She's blind, you know? Yeah. I went there. Yeah, you did. <laughs> and that's our show. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks for, for joining, joining us. Stop in at horrorguys.com, read the reviews, check the links, and uh, going to study for next week. We're going to have more movies. We will have two ooh, Wolfmans. Ooh, the Wolfman from 1941. Our somewhat contemporary classic, The Devil's Rejects from 2005. Never saw that. I saw that one at the theater when it came out. Mm. The new, the newer movie, The Wolfman, from 2010. So we're going to watch the old Wolfman. We're going to watch the new Wolfman. Is that the Benicio Del Toro yeah, It one? is, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Anthony Hopkins and uh-huh. some other people. Big yeah, names. Big names. Big names. Kind this of was the one that was going to relaunch the Universal yeah, Monster big universe. Big names, not such a big hit. Didn't work so well, yeah. Yeah. And our international feature will be Revenge from 2017. You know what country that is? I thought it was Australia, but I'm not sure of that. Oh, okay. I was thinking French. Mm. I guess we'll find out when we see it. We'll find out. Give those a watch this week and see if your opinion matches ours next week. Yeah. Check out Twitter feed at at Horror Bulletin, our Facebook group at Horror Guys Podcast, and of course the website at HorrorGuys.com. I'm Brian. I'm Kevin. And we'll see you next week. See ya. <laughs>